no lo veo. Okay. So now, isn't that <clears throat> doesn't that become um, x squared minus four? Y squared equals x squared minus four. Yeah, y squared equal. No, 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 no. If you square this one, this one is negative times negative. It's negative sign. It's go away, right? Oh, you, yeah, right? that's right. You square the right? Yeah, okay. you square the both side. The radical is go away. So still it's y square equal no? 4 minus x square. So it's next square, it's gonna go to the right side. So that's why center 0, 0, right? The radius is what? 2, right? So it's be 2, negative 2, positive 2, negative 2, x and the y. Okay. Now, again, what kind of a graph is that one? I want to make sure that. The bottom half of a circle because it's negative. That's radical. right. That's right. It's only the negative radical means, oh, it's a bottom half, half of the radical. No? Because you have a negative half. Right? So there is not the top half. It's only the bottom half. Then, what? <laughs> What's my looking for? Area from what? Uh, zero to two, right? Oh, it's a zero to two, this area. Oh, that's the, my area. Right? Oh, that's the area I'm looking for. So how do you find that area? The area equals pi r squared? Uh -huh, pi r squared, right? The pi r squared. But make sure, again, this is, it's not the full circle. It's only, it's a quarter, right? right? Because it, actually you have a full circle, but I'm only looking for that area. So you gotta cut the force. So it's pi, r square, r is two, it's a two square over the four. So what's the answer? It's a pi, right? Eh? Because two square is four, four over four. So cancel that, it's a pi. But I want to think, is this true? Am I right? Can I say this is my final answer, pi? This is under the x-axis, right? The negative pi? That's it. It's a negative pi. So we have to assume this is a negative area. It's under the x-axis. So that's why final answer is not really pi. Final answer is negative pi. Okay. Are you guys okay? Again, I'm recording that lecture. If you don't want, you know, see the picture or your name, just make sure hide it something, you know, so, because I'm gonna posting that link to that, like, your campus account. So maybe some student are going to see your face if you are, you know, if your camera is on. All right, so, is that good? Just let um, me know if you are okay with it. Well, I was gonna ask. Yeah, what's that? So so normally to find the area under the curve, you use the, yeah, you take the derivative, right? Yeah. So, but did we take the derivative here? Oh, no, no, the integral. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I mean, I'm going to start the integral too, yes. But this is its concept of the, what's the really definition for the integral means. Because some questions clearly i have no idea how to graph it this is a special case we know how to graph it right those are really easy one because we know how to graph it but some questions i have no idea how to graph it so i cannot do this way so that's the next section we're going to talk about it if you cannot graph how are we going to find the answer right that's the next section no? all right so let's move on. Okay, so this is just another example I want you to understand it. Okay? All right, so let's move on to the next one, this part. Okay? Right. So look at 
this one. This is a page of the four, five point two. So this guy. So here is, it's a graph. It's I am giving. So here is x-axis. So here's my label A, B, C, D. Then from the A to B, well, I give you the area here. Oh, there's the 12 area. Then from the B to C, here is area 10. Then C to D, here is area 8. So question is number one, this guy. So integral from A to B, okay? the function f of x. So what's the answer that they say? 12. That's it, 12, because the area under the curve is exactly 12. Because okay. it's given. That's it, because that's more given the area, so I don't need to calculate it. Just so this is how to read your graph. Okay. The question C, right? Question B. From the B to C, what's the area? 10. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. B, B can work. Negative 10? That's it. It's a negative oh, yeah, 10, yeah, negative right? 10. Because it's the under the x-axis, it's a negative yeah. area happening. That's why even you giving the 10, it's not <laughs> really you tender. So make sure yeah. you should see the graph so you guys know it. <laughs> how are you? How are you? Hey, how about that one? A to C. A to yeah. C. Yeah. Here's positive 12. Here is a negative 10. So if you combine together, so what do you get? Okay. 2. 2. So that's the answer of 2. Okay. That's an easy one, right? How about the number 4? From B to D. Negative 2. Negative 2. That's it. Because this is a more negative and here is a positive 8. Yeah, it's a negative 2. Okay. Negative 10 plus 8. Answer is negative 2. Okay. It doesn't take okay. Okay, any questions here? Oh, sorry, can you see it? Okay, that one is easy, right? <coughs> yes. Okay, yes. yes. Yeah, there are some properties I want you to understand the integral, <coughs> define the integral. Yeah. Okay, what's this mean? I know you don't have a graph, but think about it. There is a function f of x. Then you are integral from a to a. But even you can use it. Oh, so here's my graph. Then let's find the area from the A to A. So what's my area from A to A? Zero? Zero, that's it. Because you don't have an area. Because you start A and you end A. There is nothing <laughs> area here. It's just a point. So that's the answer is zero. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Then let's say, you know, you have a to b f of x dx. Yeah, what's happen instead of a to b, I'm going to use a b to a f of x dx. So originally, I have a to b. Originally A to B. Then now I'm gonna flip from the B to A. Is it the same? I know its concept seems the same, right? Oh, A to B, B to A. But there's some. You need negative sign. If you flip yeah, the order, yeah. If you flip the order, you have to have a negative sign. Okay, so that's the one thing that you have to be careful. So now, a to b, you have a two functions, f of x plus g of x, the dx. Okay. Oh, so there are two functions, but integral is from the a to b. Okay, we are able to. Separate f of x dx, and again it's a to b is a to b, the a to b g of x dx. So you can function your function, you can separate if you have a plus sign or minus sign. Okay, if you have a plus sign or minus sign between, you can make the two different integral 
concept of two different areas. You can just put it together. So that you can do. Okay. The question four, here is A to B. There is a constant C f of x dx. Again, its integral is only belong to my function x, f of x. So c is a constant. So it's nothing to do with this integral. So c can be outside. The a to b, f of x dx. Yeah. So you can take the c outside. Because c is nothing to do with my function f of x. The number five. This is important. Okay, number five. Let's say I have a to b, f of x, dx. Okay. I wanna make the two different integral. Okay. So think about it that way. Now here is your functions, f of x. Then, oh, there's a to b happening. I'm looking for the area from the A to B. That's what this means. But if there is C, you can choose any number between A to B. So C is, it's a sum between. So I can say A to C f of x dx. So C is at the middle point. It's connecting from the A to B. Okay. So, A to C, also you can say C to B, f of x, dx. It's the same concept. Okay. So, instead of straight A to B, you can say A to C and then start to C to B. Okay. That's two same area under the curve. Because sometimes you use that technique. So C is some you know, bridge between A to B. Is any, so far, any questions? It's not too bad, right? Here. No. Okay. That's just pretty. Okay. One thing. This guy. I want to make sure it's not an easy one. <laughs> then, it's a, there's a similar question, the homework question. I think Isabel, you put the homework question, right? Yeah. Okay. So this question is be that. Okay, I can show you the homework questions. Uh, 5.2. View it. Oops. Oh, man. It's the one homework question, so you don't get lost, to be honest. Sorry. Internet is really, really slow, this computer. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, I got it. So look at the, these questions. Okay. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, we can see it. Cool. You can see it? this one. Yeah. Number five. Yeah. Okay. I know you haven't tried yet. This is the five point two. They are saying the using the form of the definition for the integral, giving the this theorem to evaluate. So this is integral negative 220 8x squared plus 8x dx. Yeah. So you guys can copy it. You guys copy the questions. Okay. So I'm going to copy the question here. Yeah. Integral 220.
Okay. So what the saying is, I want to find this one, but you can say, oh, can you graph it? What kind of graph is that one? What kind of graph that one? Parabola. Parabola. But can you quickly sketch it? What's the most easy way to sketch the graph? Do you know that? You factor an x. That's it. Oh, so let's factor out the 8x, right? Yeah, I was going to okay. say that. x what? Plus 1. Plus 1. So what's my x-intercept? x equal what? Negative 1. Negative 1 and one more? 0. 0. 0 and the negative 1. Oh, this graph crossed the negative 1 and the 0. Right? And then I know it's been a regular u-shape. So cross the, these two points. It's got to be... Something like this, right? Okay. Oh, it's gonna be something like this. Okay. The pretty much question says, Oh, I'm looking for from the negative 2 to 0. Okay. Oh, here it's negative 2. Sorry, I need a little. To zero. This and this. Oh, I'm looking for the area from the negative two to zero. But how are we gonna find that area? Even this is just a curve, not a straight line, and this is another negative curve. Okay? So we can't. Do you remember that? We cannot do it. That's why we put up this Riemann sign. Okay? Bunch of the rectangular, let's add it together. So I'm going to add a bunch of the rectangular, a bunch of the rectangular, a bunch of the rectangular. Let's add all little tiny rectangular. Let's add it. No? This is just adding a bunch of the rectangular. Yeah, how do you set up? Do you remember that? So this is same as limit. Right? N goes infinity summation k equal 1 to infinity f of x k times delta x. Do you remember this guy? This is my height. Hey, this is my base. So base times the height. This is the height, right? Height. Times base. That is our rectangular. Right? Base times the height. Then let's add a bunch of the rectangular and then take the limit many, 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 many rectangular you, got, you, are, you guys are adding. That's the concept, right? The first, how do you do the delta x again? How do you do the delta you get, x? You get the two coordinates from the integral, so I think it would be negative 2 minus 0. Yes. Because it's usually negative 2 over. minus 0 over, over what? And that's it because we don't know how many rectangles. Oh, so let's say uh, assume n rectangular because n goes many, many, many in rectangular happening. So you have to keep that, you know? So this means the n rectangular you are looking for. Oh, so negative 2 over n. Oh, uh, from a to b, right? Sorry. Yeah, a. Sorry, it's, it's wrong. Okay. Oh, okay. A, a, B minus A, though. B minus A. Yeah. Okay? B minus so A. So just be two. Two over N. Okay, so let me erase it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I see. I find it. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry. So here is a to b. So it's b minus a over the n, right? So b is 0 minus negative 2 over the n. So it's b just 2 over the n. Okay. So I got the delta part. It's done. Okay. Then how do you find the height? If you want to find the height, 
I need x value to plug in the function so I know where's my height. So we use right Riemann sum, left Riemann sum, midpoint Riemann sum. But if you take the infinity limit, okay, doesn't matter which Riemann sum you use, it's going to end up the same answer no matter what. Okay. So I don't care left Riemann sum or right Riemann sum or midpoint Riemann sum because it's infinity many. So it's not going to change your answer, be honest. That's why which one is most easy Riemann sum? Do you remember that? Yeah. This one. So which one is easier? I'm going to use left or right or midpoint. Right. Right. Right, right. is easier. That's right. Oh, I should use that one. So I'm going to use right point. Okay. So make the formula is right point is delta x times k plus a. Yeah. Delta x, that's that, right? Oh, 2 over n. The k, k is make sure k is how many rectangular means. So I have a n rectangular. So k is k. Don't change it. k is k. k is, you know, k equal 1, 2, until n is rectangular means. k cannot change it. k is k. Yeah. So what's the a in this case? a is negative, right? From the a to b. Oh, it's a negative. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? That's the A. Though. Make sure A is a negative 2 though, right now from the A to 0. Oh, so right here. Oh, that's my right point. So that's my right point. Then where should I plug in this one? Right point. So I can find the height. Because I need the height. Right? So I know this is my x value. Right? Right point x value. So I should plug in actually x of the k. Plug in this x value to where so I can find the height. Where's my functions? What's the original function in this case? 8x squared plus 8x. That's right. That's it. Oh, this is my original function, right? f of x. Okay. So let me rewrite it. So limit, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of the limit later. Okay. Summation, we're going to take care of the later too. Don't worry about it. Okay. The f of f of x meaning this one, sorry. In this case, this is my function, right? 8xk square plus 8xk. The delta x is this one. 2 over n. Okay. So make sure delta x is this. The height is this one. Yeah, because that's my functions. That's become my height. Okay, so let me rewrite one more time. Limit n goes infinity. K equal 1 to infinity. So make sure 8 is nothing change. What's the f of k? f of k does things. That makes three things. I should put it in right here. And make sure I don't forget the square. I have to square that. So it's b. 2 over n. k. A, minus 2. Square. Okay. Only I'm taking over the right now here. I need a square. That thing have to be squared. Right? They also put us 8. This guy. It's be that one. So, 2 over n, k, the minus 2. Yeah. So, that's the this part. Means. This part becomes the one. Okay. Because I plug in the x of the k, which is that guy. Yeah. Plug in here. That's why the square happens. Yeah? The 8, plug in here. Then make sure delta x is 2 over n. Okay, so let me stop right now. So just 
Let's make sure you copy that one. Okay, forget the limit. We're gonna take care of the limit as a final step that we don't care right now. Okay, just to take care of the last summations. Okay, did you guys copy? This is just how to set up the. Can I move on? Everybody okay that one? Okay. So make sure next one it's a K. This summation is only talk about K. K is a change. K equal one, K equal two, K equal three. K is a change. K equal one, K equal two, K. N N doesn't change, make sure. Okay. That's why this two over N. It's a constant for us. Does that make sense? Only K, I need to care. Okay? K is a change. This K change. That K change. But that one doesn't change. Because it's a constant. Okay? So, we will take care of the limit to final step. Don't worry about the final. Okay? So, this one, it's a constant. So I can take out this 2 over n, it's outside of the summations. So 2 over n, summations. k equal 1 to in, sorry, not the infinity, 1 to n. Sorry, my bad, it's n. n. Because n goes infinity. Okay, so bunch of rectangular goes infinity. That's sorry, let me, let you fix the n. So did you understand that this constant I can take away from the summations? Okay. Then this part, let me take care of that. Eight? Oh, even, did you see that? That eight, that eight, I can factor too, right? Yeah. Eight, because eight is also constant. Oh, let's factor out the eight. So, mm -hmm. this eight, this eight. Okay. It's not, so let me quickly. Okay, so now it's just a bunch of the algebra you have to do. So, so far, I have a square. And then 2 over n, k minus 2. That's all I get. Okay. 8 to factor out, 2 over n factor out. You guys okay so far? Okay, I know this is the algebra concept that you have to understand it. Because that's the harder part for the next level we are talking about. Yeah, so it's not the basic like algebra you guys took. Yeah. So now this one is a 16 over n, right? So 16 over n. The summation k equal 1 to n. Okay, so this guy, I just need to FOIL it. Well, I don't have a choice, I need to FOIL it. So 2 over n k squared. What's the 2 over n k square? 4 over n squared? Yeah, 4 over n squared and also k squared. K squared, right? That, what's that? What's the formula say? Four. A plus b squared. Four. Eh? Formula. This guy, yeah? Oh. Uh, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared formula, right? What's that? Right? I did this square, a square, that one, this guy. Then I need a 2ab. So 2 times a times b, what do you get? 2 times 2 Minus over n k times negative 2, though. times negative 2. So 2 a b, I need a 2 a b. Um, <coughs> negative 8 yes. over n k? That's it, negative 8 over n k. Okay. The last one, b square, b square is Negative 2 squared. That's everybody know for. Okay? Then this part more nothing changes. 2 over nk, right? Then minus 2. Okay. Okay. I just need to simplify a little bit. Okay. Limit. n over infinity. 16 over n summation. n equal 1 to here. And then, let me make sure, 4 over n square, k square, 
Det är this one. Negative 8, right? You guys get the negative 8 NK, right? NK. The plus. Did you see? This one combined the like terms. I can do it, right? 4 minus 2. The this one nothing. 2 over NK. The plus 2. You guys okay, right? I just combine 4 minus 2, though. that's it's a positive 2. Okay. But can you see another like terms happening? Can you see it? There's something I can combine, combine the like terms. Where is it? K, non squared k's. That one here. Did you see? Negative 8 over n plus 2 over nk. They are like terms. Oh, I'm able to combine. Okay, if you get lost, stop me. You don't want to get lost here, okay? It's, it's harder to catch up the old algebra we doing. Okay. Just any time you stop me, if you get lost. Okay. Right. So 4 over n square k square, right? This one combined the like term, though. Just a negative 8 plus 2. Wait, what's the negative 8 plus 2? It's a negative. 6, right? NK, the plus 2. Okay. Is there any questions so far? Are you guys with me? Got it. Alright. The finally last step. Do you remember the formula I wrote last time? This page, 5.1. This is a summation formula. Do you remember this one? 5.1. If you open the 5.1, I wrote the formula. If we have a k square, 1 over 6, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, right? If we have a just n, 1 over 2, n, n plus 1. Right? So, look at it. Oh, make sure n is nothing to do with it. It's just k. Okay. k is my... k is my variables n is not the variable k change that make sure pay attention to just k don't pay attention to n n is nothing to do with right now yeah. oh i have a k square happening that's why oh i should use that formula k square formula 1 over 6 n n plus 1 2 n plus 1 so this formula we can use it this is that part happening no? so let me rewrite okay limit don't do anything just leave it limit. The 16 over n, nothing to do with it. So now, 4 over n square, nothing to do with it. Just pay attention, what's the k square? Did you see? k square is that one. Right? My k square formula said 1 over 6, n, n plus 1, 2, n plus 1. So this is a k square formula, no? k square formula. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. 1 over 6 n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1. That's the k square formula. There's one more, right? Okay. Yes, so for, for k. Okay. There is another k happening here too, right? Not the k square, but it's just k. Again, negative 6 over n, it's constant, so don't touch it. You cannot touch the negative 6 over n. But k... K, I can change it. Do you remember the K formula set? Oh, here's my K formula. Okay, 1 over 2, N, N plus 1. Oh, here's my formula. So, you can say, 1 over 2, N, N plus 1. Okay. The last one, 2 though. Do you remember the, this guy? If we have a constant, what I say? Just a constant. I know there's nothing to k, so it's what happened. Constant times n. Okay. So here is a constant of two. So two times what I say. N, two n. Okay. That's the formula. Say, c n. Okay. Two n. Any questions so far? Okay, now, pretty much we are done. 
until can you get the this limit or not? If you can get the limit, we are done. Yes. All right, how do you take the limit? Okay, this is too messy. <coughs> it's just too messy, okay? So let's simplify a little bit, okay? 16 over n, I'm not gonna take, I'm, I'm, I'm just so far just from it. Okay, so can you cross out like this one? Six and four, let's cross out, that's what you get, right? That's a two third, right? Two over three, and also this n, this n square we can cross out, right? Oh, I'm gonna cross out, right? n and n square, so it's just two over three n, right? Two over three n, yeah. Or one over n, and then this one you don't need to touch n plus one. Two n plus one, okay? So far, at least it's a little better to see it, okay? The next one, I'm gonna cross out two. I don't wanna see too many things going on. Okay, here is cross out three, right? The here is cross out. So I get a negative three, right? The n plus one, then two n. Good, good. Okay. But again, if I distribute here, I can combine a little nicer. Right? Here is a negative 3n. Right? Negative 3n minus 3 plus 2n. So what you get? Oh, combine the like terms right here. That's a little better. Right? Okay, so let me rewrite one more time. So I just need one more, couple more lines and then we are done for this question. So you got the negative n minus 3. Okay. Is there any questions here so far? I just combine the like terms right here. Negative 3n and the plus 2n. So you get the negative n minus 3. Okay. So the last thing I, gotta, I have to do is I need a distribution. This this guy. Okay, make sure this is the one term. Okay. I need the distributions right here. Then I need a distribution for that right here. Okay. So make sure three distributions are happening here. Okay. Then pretty much we are done. So limit and it goes infinity. So I don't wanna get lost here. So just pay attention to the distribution. Here is 16 times 2, right? It's a 32. Okay. Over 3. And then square. n square, right? But denominator, the denominator is n square. 1 over n square. And the numerator will nothing change. n plus 1. Right? 2n plus 1. Okay, that's happening. Okay. Okay. Just the n and the n square, so it's gonna be the n square happening. Then I distribute here, next one. So what you get when you distribute here? I know n cancel out, right? n and n. So minus 16. Yes, negative 16. Okay. The last one, when I distribute it, get negative 3 times 16. I know it's number is a little big, but 16 times 3. 48. 48, okay, thank you. 48 over n, right? Okay. Sorry. I gotta write that way. Final step, final answer. So now let's take the limit. Limit n goes infinity. Then what's happen if n goes infinity? Okay, let's do the easy one. Think about it here. If n goes infinity, what's happening? 48 over a huge number. Zero. Zero, right? 48 divided by the huge, huge, huge number is almost zero. Oh, that gets you zero. So I don't care this limit. Negative 16 and negative 16, nothing I can do about it. Okay, the one more thing here. Pay attention here. Okay. 
Okay, just listen now. Just listen. I will give you the time to copy. Okay. Next one. This part, everybody get confused. Okay. 32 over 3, there's nothing I can do. Just leave it on. I'm going to take care of the letter. Okay. Here is numerator has n and n, n square, right? The denominator has n square. Do you remember the chapter 2 we talk about how to take the limit? If you have a top is a square, denominator is also square, it's the same degree. How do you take the limit? If you have a same degree top and the bottom. We talk about it. Multiply by the yes. greatest exponent or something? Uh, like yes, that? yes, yes, yes. But it's the same degree. This is a shortcut way. If you have a same degree top and the bottom, it's n square, n square. So, what's the limit is your coefficient. What's my coefficient here? Here's one, right? Here's a two, though. Oh, it's coefficient is two. Two over one. Oh, it's two over one. That's the this limit happening. Just pay attention what your coefficient. If you have a same degree top and the bottom, that's a shortcut. It's always the same degree top and the bottom. It's what's your coefficient? Here it's two, right? Two times one. Then this is one. That's a like two over one. Then 32 over 3. It's just to keep it. Then negative 16. Just to keep it. That should be that your answer. If you finish that math, you get the answer. Sorry, I need to write this one. Sorry. Answer is, okay. Uh, what's the 32 times 2, right? Because I don't think. 64 over 3 minus 16 over 1. So I need a common denominator so I can get the answer. What's the 64? Minus common denominator is 3, right? 48. 48. Yep. So, what's the answer you get? You subtract it. 6. 16. 16, right? 16. Oh, yeah. Over 3, right? That's your final answer. That's long-winded. Long, the one question takes long, okay? Make sure, this is, I really want you to remember because we're gonna use this technique all the time, even calculus too, okay? If we have a same degree top and the bottom, right? Degree two, right? Denominator also degree two. Pay attention what your coefficient. That gets you the answer. It's coefficient is two over one. That's a like two over one. Because this technique, it's going to help you a lot. It's going to help a lot. Because you don't want to take it every single time, divide by the top and the bottom. That takes time for the finding a limit. Okay, make sure what's your coefficient. Coefficient. That's the this part. One about to happen. Okay. That makes really, really save your time. But I know it's still long question, that one. But answer is that guy. Are you guys okay? Just I know you need to probably a couple of times you gotta practice yourself. That's but that's why I did one homework together. So you can do that. Another homework question is similar to that one. So you should practice her. You should practice yourself. Do you have any questions, everybody? You no, can speak up. <laughs> I know probably you need a little more time to observe what I say or everything right now. I know it takes time. But who wanna do every single time that questions, right? Pretty much no one wanna do it. This is calculating that one. How it's gonna take forever to find the answer? Probably you don't wanna do it every single time. Right? Because limit takes time. Summation takes time. So that's why probably we don't want to do it. So what you finding an answer, just avoiding the, these steps. I still want to get the, this answer. 
right? So that's the next section. So we're gonna move on the next section. Huh? So let's move on the next sections. This guy, 5.3. So 5.3, pretty much, let's take not to take the limit. Oh, I really don't want to take the limit every single time to finding the area. That's a pretty much taking a lot of time, right? So you really don't want to do it. <laughs> So here is that we're gonna do. Okay? So don't worry about that part, I'm gonna figure out later. Okay. Area functions. Okay, area functions. Okay. This one. F is continuous from A to B. The big F is it's an entire derivative, which is your exam you guys took. We know how to find the finding the entire derivative, right? So Let's say you have f of x dx the from the a to b. The, I know we practice how to find the limit, but pretty, probably you don't want to do it limit because that uh, takes forever to do it. So what we're going to do is let's find the Anti-derivative, right? That's a big F. Oh, I'm gonna find the anti-derivative, right? Which is big F. No? This is back to the chapter four. When you took the exam, we practiced how to find the anti-derivative, right? Then, still it's A to B, it's gonna affect. Oh, A to B, right? So that's the notation we're gonna use. If you have a from A to B, Okay, so you're gonna write the A to B like this. So what this means is at the entire derivative of the B, you plug in the B, subtract, you plug in the A into, into the entire derivative. So pretty much what you say is instead of finding a limit, which we practice just to practice the example long, you know, homework question we did. I didn't want to do it. Let's just take the entire derivative. But now this A to B affecting my entire derivative because I got to plug in the B. I got to plug in the A. Then let's subtract each other. Okay, so that's the this concept to me. So this is we call the fundamental theorem calculus. Okay, so let's practice. If you practice, you understand much better. Okay. Just before we're gonna practice this guy, are you guys remember that this this formula? How do you take the entire derivative of the power? We did it, right? It's a chapter four. What's the formula set? One over n yes. plus one, x to the n plus one. N plus one. And I know we normally put the plus c, right? Yeah. Right? But this is, it's an undefined one. You don't have an a to b. If you start a to b, you don't put the c anymore. Okay? If you have a sum number, we are not going to put the C. If it's undefined one, you don't have a value of the number, you need to C all the time. Okay? But if you have an A to B, we don't gonna put the C anymore. Okay? Because we're gonna take care of the C part. Okay? But that's the formula we use. Okay? So start right here. Start right here. So don't forget this formula. It's a constant of 60. We don't do that 60, right? 60 divided on, right? So what's the anti-derivative of the x? So use that one, right? Square. Yeah, 1 over, 1 over what? You add 1, oh. 2, x to the square, right? So 60 is a constant, don't touch it. So it's power 1, that's it's 1 over 2, right? 1 over 2, x squared. 
Again, negative six is a constant. Don't touch it. Negative six, don't touch it. So I'm gonna take the x square. Right? What's the x square derivative? Oh, integral. Sorry, integral. Integral derivative. It's be one over three x cubed. X cubed. Okay. So that is this part happening. Don't put the c. We don't have a c. So that's the this part. You did anti derivative. Yeah. Then now I need a to b. Our a to b is zero to ten. So you're gonna put the zero to ten. This is your a to b, that's 0 to 10. 0 to 10. Yeah. So I need to simplify a little bit. This one, let's simplify that one. Right? 60 over 2, 30, right? 30x square. It's 3 and 6, so you can cross out, right? Negative 2x cubed. And 0 to 10. Yeah. Okay? Just yes, now, What's the formula set? Oh, I need to plug in b into antiderivative, which meaning I need to plug in 10 into antiderivative. That one. So, 30, 10 squared, right? Then minus 2, 10 cubed. Okay, so that's the this part. That's the f of b happening. Okay, you plug in that 10. Okay, that's the f of b happening now. But there is an a part I gotta take care of it. Oh, sorry, are you guys still copying? Yeah. Same. I have to plug in the a, right? I have to plug in the a. So that means I have to plug in the zero. But zero is easy because if I plug in the zero, it's a zero. Zero minus zero. It's just a zero. Oh, it's just a zero. Right? If I plug in the zero. But make sure it's always subtract. It's always subtract between. Okay? That's the f of a part. Then you are subtracting each other. Okay? Yeah, what's the final answer? After you calculate that one, more well, it's done. That's okay. your answer. Okay? Uh, it's a 100 times 30, right? 3,000? 3,000. 3,000 minus, this is 2,000, right? Uh -huh. The answer is, oh, it's 1,000. So that's the answer. Answer is 1,000. Are you guys okay? Yes. Can you show me? Because this is make sure from now on we're gonna do bunch of the anti derivative, especially the defined one. So make sure you have to understand the math. Because how easy is it instead of taking a limit? Limit and summations. <laughs> yeah. Because if you do proper way, that's the example we did. Then you end up with the answer. But if you do shorter that way, you got that way. But you're gonna get the same number. It's no matter what, how you do it. But this is, you guys see, well, how easy is it? Instead of having yeah. that limit. <laughs> okay, so that's why, I know this is a, it's a definition for that anti-derivative means. That's actually the definitions. But most of the questions, pretty much we're not gonna do it because who wanna do it, that limit? Because we know how to find the answer, right? All right, yeah, let's do a couple more examples and I'm gonna stop today. Like, I wanna finish with a couple more examples, okay? So, just before we're gonna do, just a quick review, anti-derivative. Just before the anti-derivative, I just wanna make sure. What's the sign x just the derivative, not the anti-derivative, sign x derivative. What did I say? Cosine. Cosine, no? Cosine. Cosine x. What's the cosine x derivative? Negative, negative sine x. Negative sine x. Huh? Negative sine yeah. x. What's the tangent? Secant squared x. Secant squared, right? Secant squared. Because I don't want to memorize the anti-derivative. Because you just need the derivative, not the anti-derivative. What's the secant? Secant x, tangent x. Secant x, yes. Tangent x. Okay. Then look at the questions, okay? 
Three is constant. I don't care, right? I need a sign. Sign anti derivative. Sign anti derivative. What are you getting? Negative cosine. Negative cosine because negative sign you have to carry with it. Okay, we are going to the anti derivative. So negative cosine. Oh, I'm a negative cosine happening. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay, sign anti derivative is negative cosine. Under 0, 2, 2 pi happening, right? Eh? Again, negative cosine, a negative 3, just leave it on. I don't care. It's a negative sign under 3. It's constant. So I'm going to plug in the 2 pi. So what's the cosine 2 pi, right? Eh? Then I'm going to plug in 0. What's the cosine 0? Then you have to subtract each other. Right? Cosine 2 pi, then cosine 0, then let's subtract each other. What's the cosine 2 pi? Do you remember that? Cosine 2 pi? 1. Cosine 2 pi is 1, though? Yeah. What's the cosine 0? 1. 1. Oh, it's a 1 minus 1. What's that? <laughs> It leaves it to zero. Zero. Let's say one minus one, it's zero. Zero times negative three, it's anyway zero. Oh, answer is zero. You guys okay that one? Answer is zero. But it's not bad. This one is pretty simple. But if you see graph also, it's a sign graph, right? What's the sign graph say? Sign graph is that one, right? Oh, sorry. Sign graph is a wave, right? It's yeah. the 0 to 2 pi, right? So I'm finding the area 0 to 2 pi of the sign graph. Oh, 0 to 2 pi of the sign graph of the area. Did you see why it's zero happening? Oh, yeah, because the, the areas cancel out. That the area other. is canceling out. That's why the answer is zero. That makes sense. Right? It's zero to two pi. Exactly, the area is canceling out from the zero to pi and the pi to two pi. That's why it makes the answer equal to zero. It's just if you want to see the graph, that's the concept. That's the concept of the anti derivative. Because most of the students I see all the time, they know how to take the anti derivative. But some students have a really, really hard time to see the graph concept. You have to understand both way. It's going to help calculus too a lot if you understand both way. Yeah. All right. Yeah, can I give it a couple of minutes? Okay, that's the our goal today. Let's get these two more questions. If you get the anti derivative, I'm happy with it today. That's it. Okay. Right. How do you start that questions? How do you take the this anti derivative? You guys know you guys know that it's chapter four. We did the exam similar question that one. How are we gonna do it? You put them both under T. That's right, you separate, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. You gotta separate them before you take the anti derivative. Though. Just forget the 1 over 4 and the 1 over 16, right? So radical t over t minus 1 over t dt, right? Then what? Do you remember that? You separate it, then what? Do you remember that? How do you do it? How are we going to do it? I'm sure you guys know you gotta just refresh. We did the exam. It's definitely we had a similar question that just like that. Fact? Doesn't that end up being t to the negative one half? Yeah, because you need a power. Without the power, you don't know how to take the anti derivative, right? What's the power? Think about what's power here, right? This one is t to the one half, right? Then this is t to the 1 power, right? So what's the power here? t, 1 half t. minus 1, right? You subtract the exponent. Negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. Oh, so now, 1 over 16, 1 over 4, 
t to the negative one half, right? Okay, this part, I just take a bit, t to the negative one half. Then minus one over t dt. Yes. Now, I you remember that this anti-derivative? How do you do it? This guy. So now I definitely need this formula, right? Negative one half adding a one. Though. What's the negative one half adding a one? Right? One, 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 one half. Yes. I right? adding a one. Then t negative one half adding a one. Okay, just refresh. Okay, I'm gonna just. This is a. Okay, it's be wide, so you probably. That's why I do the step by step, so you don't forget that. Okay. Yeah, how do you do this part? Okay, with this part, we take a bit, that one, right? Could how? you bring the T up? Okay, 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 no, no, this is a tricky one. I know it's a T to the negative one part looks like it, right? But this is, ooh, are you sure T to the negative one power, DT? But if I do the T to the negative one power, what will happen, right? This part. Oh, it would be undefined. Undefined, negative one plus one. It's not gonna work. We had a something else, that one. Natural log? That's it. What's the natural log x derivative set? One over one x. One by x, right? Yeah. That's the anti-derivative. That's why don't forget that this is natural log all the time because I'm taking the anti-derivative. Oh, this one is natural log. Anti-derivative. Okay, natural log. Okay, so don't forget the anti-derivative if you see the 1 over t, the, or 1 over x. Then 1 over 16, and then 1 over 4. Alright, so pretty much we are done. Once you get this part, it's done. Okay, so what do you get this one? Negative 1 half plus 1. 1 half. 1 half by the reciprocal. But what's by the reciprocal, right? 1 over okay. 1 half. It's just a 2. The, 2 t to the one half, right? Then natural yes. log t, the one over four, one over 16. Okay, answer can be messy. Okay, you don't have a choice. So it just, so now I'm plugging the one fourth. Two, one over four, the one half, the natural log, one over four. Okay, so you plug in the one fourth. Okay, you plug in the one fourth, you plug in the one fourth. That you get. Okay. The next one, we're gonna plug in the 1 over 16, right? So 2, 1 over 16, 1 half, the natural log, 1 over 16. Okay. Then I know we have to subtract each other. Okay. So you plug in the 1 fourth, so you plug in the 1 over 16. So we did that, right? 2, 1 over 16, 1 half, minus natural log 1 over 16. Then make sure subtract each other. So I'm just simplify it. Okay. I'm sure you can do it. What's this guy? 1 fourth of the square root. I'm sure you can see it. Right? It's a 1 half, right? Square root. It's, so it's B. 2 times 1 half, right? Then minus natural log 1 over 4. Subtract. What's this guy? Square root of the 1 over 16. 1 over 4. 1 over 4, right? Four. 2, 1 over 4. Then minus natural log 1 over 16. Okay. So now it's not so bad. I cross out here, right? We cross out here, right? So it's just 1 minus natural log 1 over 4. And then minus, this is 1 half, right? If you see. That makes a negative sign, I distribute it, plus natural log 1 over 16. Okay. It's just a combined like terms. Here's 1, here's a negative 1 half, 1 minus negative 1 half. Is that just 1 half? Okay. That minus natural log 1 over 4, plus Natural log 1 over 16. I mean, this can be your answer, 
But if you want to simplify more active weekend, do you know how to simplify more? I mean, this can be fine. This is actually the right answer too. But can you simplify? Forget the one half. The one. This part. Can you factor out a natural log right there? Ah, no, 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 no. It's a natural log property. What's the, what kind of property we had? Do you have a natural log A minus natural log B property? What's that? If we have a subtractions or a log natural property, log. Oh, you divide them. Divided A minus B, right? It's divided. So this is dividing because I see the subtractions. Oh, what's the natural log? If you divide it, what do you get? Right? Yeah. 1 over 16 divided by 1 over 4, though. Right? 1 over 16 divided by 1 over 4. 1 fourth. 1 fourth, right? Because you... Yeah, yeah natural log of 1 fourth. Yeah, natural log 1 fourth. Oh, so I got 1 over 2, right? Natural log 1 fourth. So that can be answered. If you want to simplify more, you can do it. But if you leave like this, it's, it's still fine. It's just extra step you make that like simplify. You can do it. Okay. Is that a would that be minus or plus? Yeah, no, no, no. this is a plus. <laughs> plus because you switch the order, right? Oh, okay. Right, because it's okay. subtraction is fractions. It's a plus sign. Yeah. But if you wanna go far, did you understand this one? This is another way to write the answer. Oh, yeah, because you're just, if you're gonna switch it back. Yeah, because this one is four to the negative one part, right? One fourth. So negative one is another property I can put in on the front. Right? Okay. It's a log property. You have it. The exponent can be front. So they are the same concept. Okay. Any questions here? Integral takes time. Integral is really, really picky about a bunch of the algebra stuff. Okay. Derivative is actually it's a little easier. Anti-derivative is a little harder. Okay. But I really need to you, you guys master this. Because calculus 2 is everything talking about anti-derivative. If you don't know how to do it right now, there's no way you can make the calculus 2. Okay. Everything going to be the anti-derivative. That's a calculus too. Right. Last questions. What's the e to the x anti-derivative set? E to the x. So? so like the derivative of e to the x? Yeah. E to the x, e to the x is a e to the x. I nothing changed, right? E to the x is e to the x. Back to the e to the x. Right? E to yeah. the x is e to the x. Oh, that's the most easy one. No? Oh, I got the e to the x. E to the x, e to the x. Then, natural log 8, and then 0. This is pretty much couple, only I need a couple steps. Okay, so put our game, natural log e, natural log 8, subtract e to the 0. So, would it be 8 minus 1? Mm -hmm. Do you remember this property? E and the base the e here, yeah? It's natural. easy hidden, cancel that's like cancelling out, right? That's why just the 8, right? 8. <laughs> the e to the 0 power is 1. 1. So answer is 7. Seven. Yeah? So make sure this property, don't forget that. B to the log base B, x means it's just x. It's another property you should remember. Yeah? If you have an E, it's base E, that's why it's just X. That's why it's E and the E, that's why it's just 8. <laughs> Any questions so far? You guys there? No. No? No. All right. Okay, that's my goal today. So you guys start to... Bunch of the anti-derivative integral, I want you to practice chapter, you know, 5.3. So I will continue next Monday. 
that that part. This is another technique I have to show you. So this is this part, fundamental calculus one. This is another theorem I'm going to talk about. It, okay? So I will start right here, the Monday. Okay? Right, if you have any question, let me know. But otherwise, okay, see you guys have next week and have a nice weekend. You guys good? You too. Yeah. You too. You have too, a nice Professor day. Ryan. Bye, guys. Thank see you. you. Bye. Thank you. You, you are welcome.